obviously save people uh, that may need to be rescued, uh, but then get, get these services started again because uh, we need to get people uh, back on their feet as soon as possible. Okay, with that, I'll take some questions. Governor, you mentioned that there were some people that have chosen not to stay that lived in evacu that were staying in evacuation areas. Do you have any sense? They chose to stay, you mean? that chose to stay even though they're in evacuation areas. Do you have any sense as to how many people that is? I know you're doing a survey. Well, that'll be, that's voluntary in terms of who wants to participate in that. Uh, you know, I just spoke with the Charlotte County Sheriff, which is, of course, going to be probably ground zero for this landfall. Um, and it's their view that, that the vast, vast majority of people in that zone A uh, did, in fact, uh, evacuate. Now, they did have, they have an island community where they had 31 people that, that were told, uh, were offered, you know, the transit, uh, and, and they just said that they wanted to uh, to stay and shelter in place. And so, uh, I know a lot of those barrier island communities, the the counties uh, discontinued services, so they they were incentivized to to get in maybe a more comfortable environment. But some of those people just just made that decision uh, to stay, and and they, you know, the the, the local officials were not going to grab them by the shirt collar and drag them out of their own house. And so so they did that. And look, we, we've been saying that if you're in an evacuation zone, once that order is made, uh, you're risking uh, potentially your life by, by staying. And, and people did that. Nevertheless, um, as much as you may disagree with that decision, uh, if there's people in harm's way when this storm passes that need help, uh, we're gonna be out there helping folks. I mean, that's just the way uh, we're, we're gonna do it. And I know that the folks down there in Charlotte and the surrounding counties uh, feel, feel the same way. And there's a lot of resources that have been brought to bear to do just that. Yep. Point, yep, go ahead. At this point, Governor, have you heard anything about, and I know it's early, so it's probably too soon to tell, but no fatalities, any serious injuries, anything like that associated with this point? Kevin, I have not gotten a report on that yet. We did have two people transferred from the forest to us. Question for uh, Secretary Marsteller. Of those 150 facilities, um, how many how many of were hospitals, and do you have a sense of how many patients uh, within those hospitals that would encompass? Um, the most recent information that I have, 15 hospitals um, evacuated, um, and that amounts to about, to roughly 350 um, patients. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, um, of course, you guys have been following the track, you know, I mean, it was going to be maybe North Florida, then the Tampa people were talking about one of the worst case scenarios, of course, it's gone down. You know, my view on that is wherever it hits, if you're in that community, it's probably worst case scenario for you. So I don't you know, necessarily use those. But but when it was the Tampa, you know, I spoke with the CEO of Tampa General, and, and they have um, a fortification system of their hospital that can withstand like 10, 15 feet of storm surge. And so uh, they do that so that they can keep the patients there. Because if you don't have that, and you're in a low lying area, you got to do the evacuations. A number of the hospital systems have done that who were in those low-lying areas. I think particularly in the Tampa area, I know we had a lot of special needs evacuations, as we should have. I mean, you got to take the information that you have, and they're going to feel effects from this. But my hope is, is that, you know, those patients are going to be able to br be brought back, you know, as soon as that storm has passed. And I, and I don't anticipate major structural damage uh, would, be, would be my hope in, in some of those areas. Um, individual. I got. I probably do. Okay. Yep. Sorry, Marilyn. You don't have a take on uh, evacuations for Cape Coral. Just looked up. If you look at the storm surge diagrams that NWS has, it looks like there's a lot of a lot of storm surges in that area. Sanibel and Captiva are getting hammered right now. I'm just wondering how evacuation efforts went there as they embraced the eye. Again, every, all of those individuals were under evacuation orders. I we don't actually have the numbers of who, how many, per, what the percent was that evacuated versus those that didn't. I would imagine since most of that same area went through Charlie, they probably evacuated. Um, again, Charlie was a fraction of the size of this particular storm, but I would imagine that most people that have lived through that, they, they went ahead and evacuated. I think another issue is just, I mean, there were people that evacuated Tampa Bay to Fort Myers because you see the different weather tracks and it was thought that it would go, 
hit Tampa, maybe go up the coast. And that was not that long ago. I mean, that was, what, 36, 48 hours ago. You go back another 12, 24 hours from that, it was going to hit Taylor County. Um, and so I think that some of the folks in southwest Florida, because so much focus was on Tampa, uh, then when it says, oh, actually, it may be coming here. I mean, I do think some heeded the warnings, but I think it's because the, the forecast can kind of be all over the map uh, that sometimes people say, well, you said it was there, then you said it was there. Uh, I think in the future, the, the uns- and we tried to stress the uncertainty. But when you have a model taking it to Louisiana and another model taking it to Sarasota, and then you just kind of meet, I mean, it's not probably the ideal situation. Now that we're close, once you're within you know, 72, certainly 48, I mean, those are very accurate forecasts. But before that, I mean, there's just so much uncertainty. Um, but I think sometimes people think, well, you said it was going to be here, and then now you're saying it's going to be here. So, so, so we'll see how it goes. I know the folks in Lee County, uh, once that forecast changed, I know they acted very quickly, uh, as they should have. And I know that they provided people with an ample opportunity uh, to be able to evacuate. I do think some heeded it. Uh, some did not and chose to hunker down. And, and hopefully, um, you know, the people that made that choice, that, that it works out favorably for them. issues are going to be specifically for the Tampa Bay area when it comes to rescue efforts from the state. What do you think? In the Tampa Bay area for rescue? Well, I mean, obviously, we have enough assets that, and we understand that this is a big, big impact, that uh, the rescue efforts are not going to be limited to one municipality or one county. I mean, you're going to potentially have more. You know, my hope is, is that um, you're not going to need massive rescue efforts the further away you are from the storm. Uh, I also have a huge amount of confidence in the folks in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, you look at the sheriff's departments, you know, these are very first rate operations. They have excellent ability to respond to that. Kevin will be here, our folks will be here uh, if needed, but our sense is, is that the further away from the storm, probably the, the local uh, responders are gonna be able to handle that. Uh, here in Southwest Florida, you're gonna have all those local responders out, but then you're also gonna have all this support, Coast Guard, FWC, uh, you're gonna have National Guard. I mean, this is a really, really concerted effort, and that's just the reality when you have uh, such a significant impacted spot. So, so hopefully they don't need us to fleet resources up. We will do it if there is some um, really significant. But you look at you look at the guys they got up there, Hillsborough, Pinellas, uh, Pasco, Manatee. I mean, you know, those are really, really professional operations. Did you want Shimon, you said? I did. Okay. Yes, just one follow-up question. Um, you mentioned that there were 150 facilities with mm-hmm. uh, evacuated patients, and 15 of them are hospitals. How many nursing homes is patients were involved in? And there's always the issue of transfer tra- trauma in a in transfer of an evacuation um how many um uh, you know what is what are you doing to kind of anticipate that trauma on those those individuals well to answer your how many question first um nursing homes um that have been evacuated at least again most recent information i have 40 alfs 91 um, the number of nursing home residents 3508 uh, number of ALF residents, 3,012. And that's uh, the most recent information I have as of probably 10, 10 o'clock or so this morning, remembering that the facilities are re- self-reporting into our health facility reporting system. Now, to answer your other question, you know, the Agency for Healthcare Administration has many partners involved in the um, effort to move patients when they need to be moved. Not only do the facility staff uh, have a role to play, but all of the associations that I mentioned earlier, right? So the hospital association, healthcare association, leading age, all of those individuals are directly, you know, they directly um, work with their member facilities, so nursing homes and ALFs. So it is a, it's a coordinated effort to make sure that the individuals can be placed in the right location for them taking and keeping in mind their health needs. Um, Our health facility reporting system is also used to find where there are vacancies in other in other facilities. You know, many of these nursing homes, nursing homes in particular, have sister facilities elsewhere in the state. So it makes that kind of transfer a lot easier and less stressful um, on the individuals who have to change their environment. So we will um, we'll have another update in in another few hours. 
you know, I would just say it seems like over the last 12 to 24 hours, every time you look at this storm, it's just been bad news. It gets stronger. It gets larger. And, um, you know, we really appreciate people's concern for Florida. You know, we do appreciate the, the, the prayers. You know, I'm going to be saying prayers that the folks there are able to get through this um, as best as humanly possible. Uh, this, is a, this is a really, really significant storm. It will be one of the storms people always remember uh, when they think about uh, southwest Florida, probably be the big one that they always remember. And if you know anything about our state, you go to Panama City, you know, that, that, that Michael is just part of the DNA of the community. Homestead, Hurricane Andrews is just part of the DNA of the community. This Ian is going to is going to rank up there with that. So um, you know, we need the thoughts and prayers over the, over the uh, near term. And then there's going to be a huge effort uh, on the back end uh, to help people and to get the communities back on their feet. Thank you.